So you spend an entire day cooking outside, tending a fire, babying your barbecue, and once it's time to serve, you're left with terrible results. <laughs> Well, I'm about to show you three barbecue mistakes that if you can avoid, can get your barbecue looking like this instead of this. And the barbecue cooks who can avoid them will finally be able to make fantastic barbecue consistently every time the grill is fired up. So to understand this first mistake, let's play a game. So on your screen are three pictures of smoked brisket, and I need you to tell me what's wrong with each one. I'll leave it on the screen for a moment, but feel free to pause the video if you need to. Okay, time's up, let's see how you did. So with picture one, the problem is this brisket is burnt, and you can see that by the super dark smoke ring on the back end of this brisket. And this is usually caused by either taking off too much fat during the trim, poor fire management, and most cases it's both. Moving on to picture two. So the problem here is that the fat and connective tissue is not completely rendered and broken down. And this usually happens if you don't trim enough off of the brisket or if you don't cook the brisket long enough. Finally, let's look at picture three. So the problem with this is that the fat is completely melted and it has no structure whatsoever. And this happens when the temperature is way too hot inside of the smoker after you wrap the brisket. So if you got all three right, congratulations, because you just won a lifetime subscription to Ant's Barbecue Cookout. Just click the red button below and collect your prize. But in all seriousness, I'm hoping this game has demonstrated a big problem that I see with a lot of backyard barbecue enthusiasts. Most people don't take notes when they cook. If I didn't take notes, I wouldn't be able to recall what went wrong with each of those brisket pictures and how it happened. And the way I take notes is a three-step process. Cook, observe, record. So of course you're gonna have to actually go outside and cook. I mean, you can't just stay inside all day watching mad scientist barbecue videos thinking you're gonna somehow get better at barbecue. Go outside, try new things, and most importantly, have fun. For observe, make a hypothesis. Try and get darker bark on your barbecue or render the fat faster. Then while you're cooking and after your barbecue's done, observe to see if your hypothesis was correct. And finally, record. So this can be done in video form like I do on this channel, or you can do it in written form in a barbecue journal. And for those of you interested in recording via journaling, Pitmaster Joe Yim has a video on his channel where he goes through his own barbecue journal. So you can get some ideas from that. So I highly recommend that you check out his video to see his process, link in the description as always. But whichever method you use, just make sure that you have a record that you can go back and review. Because if you don't remember what went right or wrong during the cook, you won't be able to replicate the successes or avoid the mistakes when you cook again in the future. So the second mistake is over spraying your meat. And I have to say that I see this mistake all the time, especially on barbecue YouTube shorts and barbecue TikTok. And I'll show you exactly why this is such a huge problem with these biscuits. So this is my biscuit and this is your biscuit. And I'm gonna be cooking both of these biscuits at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes per the package instructions. However, after the first five minutes, I'm gonna be spritzing your biscuit with water every one minute until the 15 minutes are up. So as you can see, my biscuit is beautiful and golden brown and your biscuit is soggy and depressing. And the reason for this is because of the Maillard reaction. So the Maillard reaction is the process of browning that occurs with our biscuits, but also it occurs on the surface of meat. In barbecue, this brown, almost black crust that forms on the surface of the meat is called bark. So the Maillard reaction occurs when there are proteins and carbohydrates, which are both present in meat and biscuits, plus heat. But this process will not occur until the surface of the meat, or in this example, biscuits, is dry. So by spraying the meat so often, just like in the case of your biscuit, you end up with a sad, soggy, barkless end product. So another added note to this experiment is the dough is really squishy and raw. And this is a parallel to people who overspritz their barbecue because a lot of the times overspritzers have unrendered fat on the inside of their barbecue. Granted, my biscuit example is extreme because of the short cook time and also because my oven doesn't have any convection, but it still does a good job illustrating the point. Now look, I get it. If you're not using an offset and you're not having to manage your fire every 30 minutes or so, sitting around waiting for the meat to be done is kind of boring. And so spritzing is just something to do to pass the time. But if you want a much more entertaining way to pass the time, then you should download Raid Shadow Land. 
<laughs> I'm, ju I'm just kidding. But man, that would have been such a sick place to put an ad. Anyways, spritzing is meant as a tool to fix your barbecue, not as an actual step in the barbecue process. It helps slow down the cooking process on the parts of the meat that are finishing too quickly through the process of evaporative cooling. Honestly, if you trim the meat correctly and you manage your fire well, you won't even need to spritz your barbecue. So I saved the best for last because this mistake is so common and it will absolutely ruin your barbecue. In fact, this mistake is so critical, I actually made an entire video on how to avoid it. So make sure to watch the next video on your screen and I'll see you guys there.